I'm seeing some circular indentations in the sediment. You see those? So it's like oh, yeah. uh, circular yeah. dots. I wonder what those are from. Like that? This one's actually star-shaped. I wonder if it's a sea star. Yeah, they look then. almost like a pattern. They could be um, feeding traces for things like echiurans. It's a type of worm that typically lives in a, a, a hole and sends out uh, feeding appendages and scoops up sediment, brings it back to the hole and digests the organic material. I'm not familiar with these. Precisely, they could be something else too. But that gives you an idea of how deep the sediment is. It's deep enough that things can live inside of it, but not that deep that, you know, if you tried to blow off the sediment, it's only a couple of inches. I like that you can mostly see these. Um, sort of corals that look like poofy trees. Like you can only see them really by their shadows. Oh yeah. Those are the, is it Metallogorgia? Right. Metallogorgia? Yeah. I think those are my favorite. It's a good Used one. to be Iridogorgia, but now I'm into these. Yeah. <laughs> Iridogorgia is like saying you like, like T Rex is your favorite dinosaur right. or something. Every, <laughs> everyone loves a Ritigordia. Yeah. <laughs> it also just proves that I know another coral now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a new favorite coral every watch. <laughs> uh, Argus looks pretty settled out. Okay. Make the northwest move at bearing 330. Roger. Um, pretty short, just 40 meters. And by the time it settles out, we should have Argus down slope of Herc, and Herc can face the slope. Great. And we can move up. Sounds good. Bridge, Nav. Can we move four zero meters bearing three three zero? That is correct. Cool sponge that we haven't yeah. seen yet. Can we on zoom on that? Much? Yeah, totally. Go for zoom. You can go in a little tighter, I think. There you go. Try and get you there. Hermit crabs on it, I think. Oh, no kidding. Or actually, no, there's something else. There might go. be a snail. Yeah, go tighter and see if you can get that. It looks like a crab. It's got legs. Is that laying eggs? I think it might be an egg sack. Oh, no kidding. Oh, wow. Oh, whoa. That's yeah. amazing. Okay, go on. There's two of them there. One of them is clearly has eggs. Let's see if I can get it. It would make sense if you were carrying eggs or laying eggs that you would do it on a high place. So you can ensure good dispersal. Uh, so I want to turn to uh, starboard when I make. Make this Great. To get to yes, I will. Thank you. Okay, go for zoom. There we go. Yeah. Oh, nice. wow. There we go. Wow, that's amazing. That's so cool, especially with the crinoid, crinoid right above it, too. Yeah. It's wow. a cool look at the connection of the crinoid as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever really noticed that before. Okay, go wide. Um, would you want to take that wrap out with Argus instead? We've got opposite wraps in. We can just leave the wrap in the 682. Oh, I, I think if I, if I come around to starboard, it's going to... Yeah, the oh. wrap will disappear if you if you take it out with Argus. Right. All the, all the wraps will. Right. Yeah, that's what I want to turn to. Okay. That way.
What's that floating at the top? Oh, it's quite nice looking. Did you want to take out that wrap now, or you just want to run with no, it? No, I think okay. as we go, because we're going, what, 340? So as I work my way uh, three, around, three, zero. or 330, okay. three, then it'll okay, sounds good. happy days. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Okay, I'll get cracking then. How long does the ship take to do a 50 meter move in these conditions, roughly? Um, I don't have a great answer for you on top of my head, but in the ballpark of 10-ish minutes, we okay. can see. Yeah, the ship will get there, and then we may, well, depending on the depth, so we're not, I mean, we're pretty deep. But like, the ship will get to 40 meters away, and we may not even have started to move yet. Yeah. If we're holding still. Just trying to game out how much time we have to do yeah. each leg of this little maneuver. Yeah, the, the the things that can take quite a bit of time with a two body system like this is is that like if you want to go one direction and then go reciprocal of that, depending on the depth that can eat up a fair amount of time by the yeah. time the pendulum swings and then starts coming. Yeah. Up. I'd rather stay in contact with the bottom and, and view that than kind of just drag ourselves off. And Oh, yeah. No, we won't drag ourselves off at all. But we'll, we'll definitely stick to the bottom. Okay. It'll just take a little bit of time to kind of get going back the other direction. But we can poke around and hunt and look at things all yeah, in that time as well. So. That's what we'll do. Yeah. A nice I-4 clade bamboo coral. Kind of like the, the rake we saw. Uh, in rake form. Garbage there again? I think so. There's a swimming sea cube? Oh, it's an eel right in front of us. Oh, no kidding. Okay. I haven't gotten any really good fish shots yet. Oh, yeah. Is that some plastic trash? Yep. Did anyone else see that? Yep. Yeah, okay. I did. Go for zoom. Wow, that is a whoa. Oh, it's been a little it big like Sanafabrinka eel. It's a little that scraped a, up. Uh, looks like it's been the battle there. Yeah. yeah. Bridge, Naf. Wow. Nice shot on it, though. Hey, Steve, you just had to comment that there weren't any eels and fish. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the way it always works. Bridge, this is Nav. Say something, and then the exact opposite happens. Yeah. Can you add twenty meters to this move? So twenty meters, bearing three three zero. Three three zero. Thank you. That's a good shot of the side of his head. Beauty. Very nice. Okay, go wide. This might be Sinephobrinchus. Nice follow. Give him a little Big break. One. Yeah. They do not like the vehicle. Yeah, loud and bright. Yeah. <laughs> like you shook his head no. Yeah. <laughs> They'll she? like open up their jaws real wide and shake their heads. That's usually when I leave.
when I do that, I imagine a hissing sound. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Uh, heads up, the bridge put in 340, so we're heading 10 degrees more northward. Okay. Thanks. Not detrimental. It looks like it just sort of switched bearing, too. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, well, I called in just adding 20 meters to oh, the move. Okay. And that's when he did the additional. Yes. Because, like, even though it was repeated back correctly, I didn't watch him put the move in. Okay. And that happens sometimes. I'm not too worried about it right now. Um, maybe take, uh, if you have time, a closer look at this little one. Yeah, here. totally. I was looking at that too. I'm like, what are you? Little Christmas tree cartoon. Go for Zoom. Can you see it from there? Yeah, yeah. It looks like a, it could be bathy pathies. And then to the left, there's a sea pen. Um, oh, the little pale. Yeah. But the, this bathy pathies here is. Uh, so black coral. Black, yeah, black coral. Yeah. Okay, go wide. Not, not, uh, probably pretty young. Uh, okay. Not very many branches on it. But these sea pens, when you start to look closely, you start to see them everywhere. Yeah, they're just very like close to transparent. Thanks, Gabby. So yeah, I'm starting to see it now. Steve, we have a question about some of the um, those red stalked crinoids we've seen, and yeah. uh, viewers noticing that oftentimes we see them living in very different areas than kind of these little hot spots of corals. Is that pretty typical, or is that kind of just what we're seeing tonight? Yeah, they um, so <laughs> they do they are co-occurring with the corals, which is not unusual, um, but typically. In my experience, where we've seen them to has all been stop, kind of on Argus settle you know, out, layer of, of you. crinoids. That sounds good. Um, Bridge, we find yeah. on certain parts of the seamount where corals may not have the ability to live Hold because ship, of please. one reason or another. There's just layers of crinoids. Thank um, you. They're very interesting. Sometimes you see them in very high densities. Can the stocked crinoids grow out of the sediment? Or do they have to grow on that kind of substrate? Stock crinoids will have a hard substrate, yeah. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Um, there are, s oh, ton of cups. Where? Fish on the bottom. Where, where, where? where? Oh, bottom there the he is. Uh, there are some stocked crinoids that don't oh. have um, hard substrate requirements. For example, if they break off, mm. they can actually articulate their stock to be prop themselves up right quick zoom 
Love this guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yes. wonderful. <laughs> so charismatic. Oh. How are they so cute? Can we get the lasers off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, buddy. Oh, might oh. swim. Oh, Pushes oh, off with his oh, knees. He's gonna swim. Let's see them walk around. I know, they're ridiculous. Hey, buddy. The type of anglerfish, if you look between the eyes, you can see that white patches is lure. Okay, go wide. Because that lights up. Uh, yeah, yeah, it you delight? probably you has some sort of attraction. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's um, bioluminescent. Usually they are. Uh, or, you know, some sort of sensory structure that um, you know, might attract prey items, for example. Sorry, buddy. It's pretty weird over here. Those little guys are such a treat. I love them. Yeah, you can put lasers back whenever you want. Thanks for the reminder there. This is a yeah. This is a really interesting perspective. I'm glad we did this uh, kind of transect uh, back the other way because we get a look at another angle of the summit. You know, not just the flat part of the summit, but you typically have a halo of organisms around the summit, where you know the currents are just starting to accelerate over the top. So you can get some pretty high density communities, and it seems like similar corals and sponges that we see at the top are down here, but they might just be bigger or uh, more extensive colonies. Go for zoom. Go. Perfect. Another bathypathies. Uh, the, the red coral below with uh, a one-clawed squat lobster. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Probably Bathy -bathy. got into a fight or something. Uh, I'm ready to make the ship move again. Uh, bearing zero three zero. Okay, great. Um, and then facing upslope should be about one two zero. But we'll see what the okay what the sonar fun. says. Bridge nav. Can we move one hundred meters bearing zero three zero? Thank you. So Steve, from when we first settled the ship out to make the northwest turn and now kind of the northeast turn, yep. um, we started that hold ship at 46 after and now it's 10 after, so that was 25 minutes total. Oh, great. Okay. Neat. So we'll see. I'm glad I think you kept track of that. That's yeah. good information. Yeah. <laughs> 25 minutes to make a turn. Yeah. I think that's, it's about the same when we're reasonable. doing the multi beam. Kilometers away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do a track back the other way, see what we see. And if we have extra time, uh, we'll evalu evaluate what happens. We'll kind of m maybe go as far as um, where that, that waypoint 000608 is, kind of but more to the northwest. Um, this one? Yeah, I kind of follow that to the northwest. Okay, hold on, let me get... Uh, 
Okay, should uh, we head back to our high density, high diversity place where you wanted to take a Niskin sample? No, uh, no, no, we, okay. we, we used all our Niskins, but okay. more, yeah, just kind of uh, straight northwest, uh, a little bit more set. Yeah, th that's fine, right about there. Okay. Yeah, we'll aim, aim for that target somewhere in that vicinity. It's pretty flat here. Okay, um, I mean, there's a slight slope up to the um, south east, but mostly so far, I guess that's what we expected. Mostly it's pretty flat. Yep. So the, the current is probably coming from your left-hand side now, right? Port so side. I'm going, I can only go by, I don't feel a lot of current right now, but this uh, coral toppled over from uh, north to south. Yep. Another way we, we can usually tell current is uh, a lot of sea fans will orient perpendicular to the prevailing current. Okay. So it's difficult to see with the bamboos and the and the metallogorgia there, but like with the perigorgia colonies, uh, yeah. they'll, typi they'll typically orient in a certain direction that suggests, you know, the, the maximum particle capture efficiency for them is going to be across that current. Right. The metallogorgia also seem to have like a little bit of like an umbrella effect where they'll like kind of blow a bit in the breeze. Yeah. So the one in front of us right now indicates that the current sort of north to south. And then the one right next to it indicates the core that the current is southeast to northwest. So. Yeah, so variable. Yeah. Yep. So strike what I just said. So just never ask Metallogorgia for directions. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice black coral, though, right here. This is probably uh, Bathypathies. Very tall. Yeah. No associates on this one, if you notice the, the pink uh, crab, spiky crab. Yeah. Uh, they got a few barnacles, maybe, and some brittle stars down below. But that probably indicates that it's a different species than the Bathypathies we've been seeing, that red one. There is a little bit of current. Okay. Not much. Okay, nice. Nice walk up. <laughs> that little soft coral found this like one little tiny rock. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> yeah, the requirements are pretty slim. Yeah, it's never going to grow very tall. Even in the abyssal plain, you know, a little pebble or something is satisfies that hard bottom uh, habitat need. Go for zoom. 
Look at him, just on his one little pebble. Oh, oh I can get it back. Just asking to be a rock, rock and coral sampling duo. Yeah, target, I know. You know. But fortunately, we're all kind of full up. We could take more, but I think we've done a really good job at characterizing this site, and we have lots of anthemastus from the last cruise as well. Oh, good. Okay. How many rocks have we collected on this dive? Okay, go wide. I don't know. Um, five rocks? Five? There's. We've taken six, six. discs, right? Six. It should be at least six, yeah. Six. That's pretty good. How do you typically sample anthemastis? Um, the best way is kind of what we saw just find a rock that it's sitting on and pick up okay. the rock. Um, but you know, depending on the size, you could suction it. Okay. Um, do they grip as hard as like an anemone? Um, Cause like I, like anemones are very difficult to get off of stuff sometimes. Right? Yeah. Uh, we have suctioned them before. Okay. Uh, that's actually probably the preferable way to do it. And even if they do get stuck in the mouth of the hose, at least you can use the suction and drop it in the bucket. Yeah, you know? I gotcha. Um, yeah, it, it's not terribly difficult. You know, okay. They, they pry you, off easily. Okay. Yeah, I was just remembering seeing them on like rock faces. And like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Could take the whole rock face, I guess. Did that that crinoid looks like it fell off the stock. Sometimes they have the ability to regrow. Oh, really? Yeah, but okay, we can take a look. depends on how much is left over. Go for a zoom. Oh, oh it wow. Is, it is oh, regrowing. Wow. Yeah. So tiny. Okay, That's go ahead. Cool there we go. Yeah, that does look like it's regrowing. So when that falls off, it because it's a stocked crinoid, does it not have the ability to swim? No, they don't. The the stocked crinoids don't really have the ability to swim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are more. Um, it's a, I think it's a family of crinoids called the camachalids. They are the swimming ones. Gotcha. But there are some stocked crinoids that, um, like the, I think we sampled one last cruise, um, Endoxacrinus, uh, that has this stalk that is articulated to some degree, and it allows them to move uh, through some kind of coordination with their arms um, and pull their stalk along with them. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a few internet videos out there showing that. Um, Kind of freaky, actually. Crinoid swimming is pretty mind-bending. Yeah. I should imagine it takes a lot of coordination. So. Can they then reattach their stock elsewhere? No, no. The if the ones that the stock crinoids that do move, they don't reattach their stock. They just kind of um, will prop up on a, a surface and kind of hold themselves in place. They have very long um, kind of appendages that come off of their stalk that allow them some stability. Okay. Yeah, they're very surreal animals. And so old, right? They've been around for... Hundreds of millions of years, yeah. Oof, that's so wild. Five, six hundred million years, yeah. Wow. We have a couple of questions about the current down at this depth, and some viewers are wondering whether it stays pretty constant, um, and does the surface current affect uh, currents down at this depth, or any of the, the deeper depths we've been at in this dive? 
Yeah, there's uh, so we do have currents, and the currents, um, we were keeping track of them across our dive today. Uh, they kind of started out from the northwest-ish um, during our watch this morning at around 3,000 meters. I think I, I got that right. Then um, they kind of did a, a reversal kind of around the summit area as we were coming up on top, and now they're back to, again from the north and northwest-ish directions so they're they're variable depending on how the seafloor is arranged but um, surface current surface uh, waves not necessarily uh, but there are some there's some some evidence that suggests that internal waves uh, might result in uh, certain flow conditions and around sea mounts hmm. um, we had a specialist on our expedition leader, last cruise, Emil, was the uh, studies internal waves and how they um, move in this part of the Pacific and how, uh, you know, when internal waves are created, uh, how they bounce off different structures like the Hawaiian Ridge. And uh, this area, these seamounts could be uh, in the path of those internal waves uh, as they move back and forth across the North Pacific. We had Emma listening in on our last watch. We should oh, have yeah. asked that question then. Got that one down. I'm sure he'll love to <laughs> add to the context of that. Go for Zoom. Yeah, good one. Brittle stars there. I think Emil's back home jamming with his band tonight. He said. All right. Okay, go on. Oh, there's some big stuff over here. Oh, wow. A little stretched out, but we'll get there. So we've got some pretty large bamboo corals. This kind of seems to be Go the dominant video? animal up here on these. This is probably as close as I'll get. There's just other places to go now. On the top of the seamount. This or Metallogorgia are pretty pretty much in contention for the most abundant coral on top of the seamounts. Oh, nice focus change. That was really cool. Okay, go ahead. Keep going in the other direction. That was super neat.
Not, I'm surprised not so much here. Uh, I think Go the flatter portion had more biology attached. Oh, there we go. Another. <laughs> yeah. There's another fish. Ask and you shall receive. Yeah. Huh. Should make such, okay. such disparaging comments about fish. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they can hear you. Yeah. Wow, oh, that's a big looking. It's like an enemy up there. Yeah. I imagine many of these rocks aren't exactly in place. The ones that are probably in place and solidif uh, solidified to the seafloor are probably larger, which is why some of these corals are preferentially settling on and growing larger on. But there's one of those uh, Proisocrinus in kind of a intermediate small stage on the bottom. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the smaller, smaller rocks don't have much attached at all. I suggest they're probably not very stable. Ferrea, glass sponge to the left, or a ferreid sponge, that family. Hey. Brussels sprouts? Not for yeah, real, yeah. <laughs> Brussels sprouts. I was just thinking we hadn't seen sponges in a while. But that's a yeah. Course. They're here. See, you did the same thing with sponges. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't say it out loud. They just showed <laughs> up. They're reading my mind. Bridge, now. One hundred meters bearing zero four zero. Thank you. So Steve, I've got a question for you. Um, as we're getting close to the end of this dive, a couple of viewers have asked, is there anything out of the ordinary spotted on this dive or anything that you didn't expect to see? Or is this kind of matching your expectations given your knowledge of these deep sea coral ecosystems? Um, the pattern and zonation of the corals we saw on this dive Matches pretty well what we expected to Go see based on other seamounts we have dove in the area. Um, even on the recent cruise, we just finished up over in the southwest, 
uh, South Wentworth chain uh, in the monument, we did see similar communities on the summits of those seamounts. Um, I'd say that the densities are a little bit different here. I think uh, the densities are a little bit more sparse on the summit compared to a bit further west, uh, but not by much. Uh, we also, we interestingly, we didn't go through on these seamounts um, high density layers of precious corals, which, you know, we did see precious corals, go ahead. but not necessarily mm -hmm, high nice, density. Steve. Huh? Oh, other Steve. Copy. Mm, sure are. <laughs> okay, go wide. Holiday. Um, there's a problem with the pump, so we are drifting. And we're going at about a knot. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right, we'll make a note and back here. Uh, We'll make yeah, it's the stern thruster that has no power. Oh, sorry, guys. We had a pretty great dive. Yeah, it's been really fun to see all those different coral and sponges, especially this past watch. I'm excited about the sunflower star that we yeah. collected. I, I would really like to go back and see the first four hours of the dive. I didn't see much of that down at 3,800, 3,900 meters, wherever they dropped in. Um, sleeping through the most of that, getting ready for watch. But I would love to go back and see that because I'm not... As familiar with those depths, and if they did see corals and sponges like they indicated, um, I'd be very curious to see which ones those are. Okay, so uh, our speed is one point one point one, which yeah. I can move at, but unfortunately, I'm behind, so I'm probably going to end up getting dragged. Okay. Uh, uh, we should you should spin around, right? Because you can go way faster forward. Than you okay. Can you're going to have to kind of chase a little bit. Yep. Meters over two minutes. Yeah, you should get on the other side of our Yep. I'm going to go around a starboard. Okay. I'm just going to keep going straight yeah, here. Yeah, keep on trucking. I'll spin around this yeah. way. Yep. Let's just get him to hold position for now. So I know we collected a sunflower star on this dive. Um, viewers are curious about other biological samples we've taken over the last Can 24 hours. Can you aim hours. that camera down uh, when you've got a free hand, Josh? If we Sorry, can pull them up. I know Can there are a couple yours, of cameras. Yeah, it's, cam it's, it's straight down. You're just right below me. Yeah, yeah totally. Just, I miss down just, cam a lot. Just keep on your scene. There you go. Yeah, yeah we, we've taken quite a bit. Um, diversity of different phyla, too. Some mollusks. What have we got for this? Um, I mean, we've got a gastropod in there, which we're pretty excited about. A couple sea cucumbers and a glass sponge also. Oh, great. Yep. Very cool. You can try and go down too, right? Mm hmm For that part, I just kept auto depth. Oh, there's auto depth, okay. Not anymore, though. I'll go down.
So Steve and Ashley, once we get to the surface, do you want to explain kind of what happens in our wet lab and what we do with all of the different samples that we've collected after each on, time? Uh, USBL sure, when course. you um, have your when you have freehand. So we have a pretty elaborate, um, elaborate but simple, if that makes any sense, <laughs> uh, way of processing our our samples. Um, Roger. Uh, for biological samples. Uh, we'll typically take the sample off the vehicle with some of the seawater that comes up in the bio boxes. That seawater is ice cold, like the bo bottom of the ocean temperature. Okay. From there, we will uh, take them inside so and let's see if you can't hold put position, them into the fridge can... to keep them cold until we're ready to process them. And then uh, right after, um, we get everything off the vehicle, rocks included. Rocks will go into bins, and if they have any attached biology, potentially either into the fridge temporarily or into um, uh, containers on the floor at room temperature so they can start to dry off a bit. For the biology, we'll typically go through a process where, we'll, where we will um, image them well, uh, since a lot of the color is lost after it's pla pra placed in preservatives. Uh, color uh, drains out, so having good images in life um, uh, is really important. Take some images, we'll decide on what kinds of preservations, and uh, we'll do some labeling, and then we'll take those specimens, preserve them, and put them into the fridge uh, for shipping, hopefully when we get back to shore. For the rocks, it's a little bit more simplistic. We'll typically image and describe the rocks, um, include details that we can't see on the seafloor. We'll take off any attached biology uh, and, uh, you know, subsample that as, as required. Uh, we'll usually, after that, um, if we have any other geological sampling needs, like we might for this cruise, we'll have our uh, scientists on the ship take examine it. If there's any need to break apart a rock, we can do that, or um, sometimes we are able to cut rocks, but probably not for this particular cruise. Um, so for the most part, we'll just... Uh, yes. uh, Steve. Hold. Yes. Um, it doesn't make quite sense to go back down to the bottom and head up towards the summit. Are we okay to just ascend early? Yeah, yeah, you're still... Argus is still coming back, right? Even though you're trying to hold station. Yeah, the ship the ship is looks like it's recovering now, but we're still swinging, and by the time we got sorted out and down, it would be 20 minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, so yeah, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. Give me a give me a shout when you do your off bottom status, and we'll do it back here as well. Okay. Yeah. So because of the kind of the jet pump failure and uh, reacquisition here, we're going to probably just roll right into our off bottom uh, since it would take a lot of time to go back down and reacquire the bottom setup again. So gotcha. I think we're going to call this end of dive uh, on dive. bottom and we're going to start to initiate our ascent and recovery process. So thanks for scientists ashore who have tuned in for this dive. Um, everyone across, let's see, we've had from the Western Pacific, we've had the East Coast of the U.S. through this dive. We've had Hawaii tuning in. We've had scientists all over the world. Uh, so they've been providing amazing expert input. We will have uh, yeah, a pretty long night of sample processing ahead of us. Uh, not only the rocks and the biology, like I mentioned, but we'll be doing some filtering of seawater for eDNA and trying to see if we can uh, capture some of that free-floating DNA that corals and sponges might give off um, into the water column. That's something we just preserve by filtering water and then uh, 
preserving the fluid. It, Just got a question of how many pounds of samples can the wet lab hold? Uh, which I guess is really just on ship. Steve, but that's off bottom for us. Off bottom? Okay. Yep. So we'll log off bottom dive status. And we're good to go. What was the question? Could you repeat? Well, it was a question about how many pounds of samples the wet lab can hold. And I think on our, our last watch, we were commenting on how much we got on the last expedition, which was. Yeah. Nine? Was it 900? 900 pounds, yeah, 900 of pounds rocks. 900 pounds of rocks. And, uh, and the heaviest being, it was like 53 pounds, so yeah, pretty heavy rocks. <laughs> it was enormous. Um, yeah, so the wet lab you know, doesn't hold a lot of samples. We typically, you know, as we dry samples in the wet lab, um, we will move them into uh, a more temporary storage. Um, we'll typically box them up, bubble wrap, you know, so they're safe during their transit and then straight back uh, into storage. And then for this particular cruise, we stored uh, some of our samples ashore uh, since we're gonna be going right back to Honolulu and shipping them straight out. So for our viewers, uh, as we're ascending, we will still be here to take any questions um, but once our ROVs are back on deck, you can actually um, still watch on Nautilus Live our scientists um, processing the samples in our wet lab. We have that as one of our camera feeds. Um, so you can keep watching the work even when our ROVs are back on deck. And we'd love your questions as we've got some blue water time ahead of us as these ROVs come up. We'll have a watch change here in about 15 minutes, but Take any questions if you have them. A few people have asked when the next dive will be, and I don't know that we have an ETA for that, um, but if you go to nautiluslive.org, we will post our updates when we have an estimated time for that. Um, so you can go to nautiluslive.org and look at our status update. Um, we often tweet it out as well, for, so you can watch for some dive alerts. All right, I just heard from our expedition lead that our next dive is scheduled to be at 4 a.m. Um, so we will keep updating our status if there's any changes to that, but you can expect us to start diving uh, again in the next 24 hours. Video is going to jump off comms for one second and jump behind the wreck.
okay if I turn your DVL off? I just want to see that that is actually the... Got a couple more viewers asking again when our next dive will begin. Um, and that is currently scheduled for 4 a.m. And you can follow along on nautiluslive.org um, for any status updates. Um, but we will still have our team here taking questions um, as we're in the blue water. We'll have a new watch. Um, we will definitely appreciate any questions you send in. Uh, I'm just going to try that craft as well. Curious to see if that's the next, the next one. Kate, if you're listening, we have a viewer that says that your bridge nav is their new ASMR. I think it just means it's very like calming like asmr is like when you watch videos of someone like slowly like raking sand or something like that so it's a compliment of, like a calming presence of consistent and rhythmic <laughs> Yeah. 